Hello, everybody. How are you today? Good. I'm so glad to see all of you here. We are a ballet company called Ballet Jorgen. And we are based in Toronto, but we travel all across Canada and into the United States performing our ballets for people. And we tell stories. That's our job. But we tell stories in a really special way. Does anyone have any idea how a ballet company tells a story? Any thought? That's right, through movement and dancing. So, of course, in order to do that, we need dancers. Here are today's episode's dancers. Hi, I'm Momoka. I'm from Fukuoka, Japan. Hola, my name is Esther and I'm from Lima, Peru. Hi, I'm Callum from Glasgow, Scotland. Hi, my name is Leo and I'm from Altamira, Brazil. Hello, my name is Hannah May and I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Ballet is a language. We can communicate with our bodies. That's really special about dance. Just like any other language, we have our own alphabet. I'm sure a lot of you have studied your alphabets for your various languages, and so have we. So we're going to show you today our ballet alphabet. Our dancers' toes and knees and hips are pointing to the side. But if you're waiting for the bus, would you be standing like this? Not really, right? This is a very important thing. We use turn out. But why do you think Dancers use turn out for all of our ballet alphabet positions. Any thoughts? It's so we can balance. We have more stability when our feet and our legs and our knees are all pointing to the side. Good. So our first position with the legs, our letter A. Then let's move into our second position. It's just a little bit wider. That's it. And then our third position, one heel is right in front of the arch of the other foot. Good. And our fourth position, we have a little bit open. It's like you're taking a step out from your third. Then our fifth position, everything is crossed. It looks kind of super twisty, but it's just one heel touching one toe and the other heel touching the other toe. So those are for the legs only, but now we've got to try the arms. So we're going to come into sixth position. Now I didn't include this initially because sixth position isn't often used in ballet, but we sometimes use it to practice other things. So sixth position is nice and simple, just standing up straight. We can all stand up and try these arms. So our arms are going to begin right in front of us as if we're holding a beach ball. Good. Find your belly buttons. And right there, that's where your beach ball should sit. Great. Then our second position is wider. It's like you're going in for a giant hug. Good. And our third position. One arm is crossed in front, holding that beach ball. Kind of looks like maybe you're in a grand ballroom and you're waltzing all around. Good. Our fourth position, one arm is up above the head and one arm is to the side. And then finally, our fifth position, both arms are up above the head. Like you're framing your face with your arms. Good. Okay. Shake out for a second. Nice. Go back to holding your beach ball right in front. This is our first position. Let's imagine that our beach ball is filled with helium and is going to float higher and higher and higher all the way up to our fifth position. And we're going to pop and the arms will open and you can sit 
all the way down or relax. Good work, everybody. How'd that feel? Excellent. We study our alphabet in class every day. In class, it's so nice because we get to go to a big space like the studio that we're in right now and we practice our alphabet. We start standing at the bar and the bar are these little poles where our dancers are standing right here. We start there to gain our balance first along with our great turnout and then we have a little bit of help from our bars as well. All right, let's take a look at our beautiful dancers dancing the bar. This first exercise is called plie. Plie means to fold or to bend, and it comes from the French. Ballet was actually developed long ago in the courts of Louis XIV. He was known as the Sun King, and he loved to dance, and he wanted everyone in his courts to be able to dance with him. And this is why we use French terminology for all of our ballet movements. You can see our dancers are moving through the positions we just talked about. Our ballet alphabet is in use already. This exercise is called tendu. Tendu means to stretch, and you can see that they're stretching their legs. They're also stretching their whole body. Really tall through the top of the head. This is a jeté or a dégagé. The legs are getting a little bit higher. Rond de jambe. Rond means circle and jambe means leg. Rond de jambe means circle of the leg. This is a personal favorite. Fondue, like chocolate or cheese fondue. This exercise makes me hungry. As the bar progresses, things get a little bit faster, a little bit more intricate. Their footwork is super quick. You can see they're flipping from side to side, one hand on the bar and then onto the next hand on the bar. And this is so they don't become lopsided. This is getting closer to the end of the bar, and this is an adage, or an adagio, or a développé exercise. And you can see that they're working on their strength as well as their stretching. And finally, the grand battement. Grand battement means big kicks or big beats. And you could see their legs were nice and high in the air. And a stretch because that's very important as dancers. And there you have it. That's our bar. Well done, dancers. so much dancers that's hard work they just did a 45 minute bar condensed into three minutes for you very very impressive so yes normally bar takes about 45 minutes to complete but that's only half of the ballet class next we move into the center we have all of this space so we have to use it we're going to do some center work in our next episode and Tune back in because we have a super top secret, highly confidential trick that helps our dancers spin many, many times without getting dizzy. How do we do it, dancers? We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>